Hello and uh, welcome one and all. Today we will cover PySpark, a Python API for Apache Spark. Apache Spark is an analytics engine for large-scale data processing. It is a distributed data processing platform, meaning it runs on a cluster. A cluster consists of three or more nodes or computers. Spark is written in Scala, but it provides API for other mainstream languages such as Java, Python, and R. PySpark is the Python API for it. It also supports other tools and languages, including Spark SQL for SQL, Pandas API on Spark for Pandas workload, and structured streaming. Apache Spark has a master-slave architecture, where the master is called the driver and slave nodes are called the workers. It is a clustered-based system and consists of the driver and multiple workers. In the driver node of the cluster, we have the driver program that creates the Spark context. Spark context coordinates the processes on the cluster. It schedules the execution of jobs and connects to the cluster manager. A cluster manager allocates resources across the Spark application. Once connected, Spark acquires executor on the worker nodes in the cluster. And these are the processes that runs the computation and store data for our application. It also sends our application code, could be a jar or a Python file, to the executor. We will run PySpark in a standalone mode. Standalone cluster is a simple cluster manager and it is included with Spark by default and it makes it easy to set up a cluster. Let's go ahead and cover the prerequisite. We will need Java JDK installed on our machine. I will leave the link for the Java version I'm using in the description below. And I'm on a Windows machine, so I'll download the Windows version. In addition, if you want to query or persist data to a database, then we will need appropriate jar files for our database. I have Postgres and SQL Server installed, so I am going to download jar files from the Maven repository site. I've saved the jar files on a C drive and we'll pass this location to the Spark context. Also, the link for these will be in the description below. Keep in mind that jar files must be compatible with your Java version. Once the prerequisite are met, we can launch our Jupyter Notebooks and install PySpark. We can use the pip command to install PySpark. This will go ahead and install the Python library on our machine. Now we can import it in our notebook. And from PySpark, we import Spark Context, Spark Conf, SQL Context, and Spark Session in our notebook. To run a PySpark application, we need Java location. So we need to provide the Java install directory to Spark. For this, we'll set a Java home variable with the help of OS module. And to the os.envirn, we provide the Java install directory. Next, we set the configuration for the Spark application. A Spark application needs few configuration details in order to operate. We provide the configuration with the help of Spark conf object. We imported this from PySpark. We set the application name, and in this case, I'll set it to example. And we set the master node URL to local, and we set the location of the jar files. We are ready to create a Spark context. We will utilize the Spark context object and call the get or create function from it. And to this function, we supply the configuration. Now we can go ahead and initiate a session. We call the Spark session and provide it the Spark context. We save the session into a variable called Spark. We can view the Spark variable to see the detail of our Spark application. It displays the configuration detail we provided above. Also, we have the link to the Spark UI. We can click on the link and explore the UI. We can see all the actions we perform in our application. They will be logged here in this UI. We will revisit the SQL slash data frame tab once we create few data frames in our application. Okay, our application is ready. Now we can use it to read data. 
First, let's go ahead and read a CSV file with spark option.csv. We supply the delimiter, a comma for CSV file, and set the headers to true. Within the CSV function, we provide the file path. This will read the file into a data frame. We display the data frame using the show function. On the data frame, we can perform various operations. You can check out the full list on the Spark website. We can print the schema of the data frame to see the columns and their data types. We can filter this data frame with the filter function. In this example, we are filtering the data frame for France only. We can specify multiple filter condition to get the data that we need. If you want to focus on few columns, we can trim this data frame by providing a list of columns to the data frame. The revised data frame includes subset of columns that we have specified as a list. In addition, we can also perform aggregate function on this data frame. We'll go ahead and group this data frame and get a count. These are a few examples of data manipulation using Spark data frame. Next, we'll explore Spark SQL. We can run SQL queries against this data set using Spark SQL. We save the data frame as a temp view called sales. And using Spark SQL, we can query it using standard SQL syntax. The output displays record filter for caps subcategory. We can perform standard SQL operations against this data set using a distributed engine. Last but not the least, we can persist this data set to a database. We have already provided the jar file for Postgres to the Spark context. Let's go ahead and declare a few database details along with credentials. And prior to persisting the data, let's preview the database. I'll go ahead and open up PG Admin and expand my database, schema, and table node. We have few staging tables in our database. Up next, we'll add a new table called PySpark underscore sales underscore table. To persist the data, we call the write function on the data frame. We provided few configurations, such as mode. Here, we will overwrite the table if it exists. This will be like truncate and load. The format is JDBC, so we provided the JDBC URL. Next, we provide the destination table name, along with username, password, and driver. And finally, we call the save function on this. Once we execute this cell, this will save the data frame to PostgreSQL database. Okay, our code executed successfully. Let's move back to the database and refresh the table node. We have a new table in our database, and this is created by Spark application. This is all on PySpark for now. I hope you enjoyed the session. Like, share, and subscribe. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video.